So, um, Fernandez Band first album, Llegó La Familia Mayor. Llegó La Familia. Yo, yo, <laughs> that's your sound right there, bro. That's, you know, that's, <laughs> that's Linky Zapata straight on the production. How was, how was that process, you know, working with um, Fernandez Band? Uh, it was it was fun. It was my first time working outside of my studio because mm-hmm. we did the production at uh, Piquet Studio. Oh, okay. There in Brooklyn, and um, we did the I did the percussion, the the drums, and the congas. Okay. At uh, Bilito Studio. Mm-hmm. Um. So it was it was a fun process. You okay. know, I'm glad you know they asked me to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, it was fun. You know, um. I would say, you know, the the only song that I did arrange was um, the slow jam solo Rolando. Uh-huh. That's my arrangement. Oh, um, wow. okay. Dale mi si mm-hmm. and Punta Rock. Okay. Um, though those three are my arrangements. Okay. The other ones, of course, um, those are Fernandez songs from the beginning. Okay. You know. Interesting. Interesting. Yo, so um, all right, so working um. Working with Fernandez then out of your studio, right? I mean, you said that was the first production that you did um, out of your studio, meaning mm-hmm. that you weren't in your studio. You yeah. went to pick it. How was that experience of you know you working with your toys versus working with somebody mm-hmm. else's? Uh, it was it was different, of course, mm-hmm. but it, and it was it was fun mm-hmm. at the same time because that way you know I get to see how other people work, mm-hmm. how other producers work and engineers. Yeah. So it was it was fun for me because. Mm-hmm. I was I was learning as I was going too. Yeah, you know, so doing going to Pique House, I was learning what he was doing, and going to Bilito House, mm-hmm. learning on what he was doing, and just picking up stuff like that. Okay, all right. So when um, what you call it? So when you were um, when Fernandez Band album comes out, how long did it take um before it came out? How long did it take for y'all to even record it? How long did the production take? Uh. That I'm not even sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> it, it, I know it took several months. Okay, because we did practice most of the songs, you know, in in Puni's house uh-huh. in the Bronx before we went to Pika to record. Okay, and actually, I remember um, arranging that Punta Rock there. Okay, and I remember I don't know we was taking a break or something or waiting for some other guys to come so we can go to the studio, mm-hmm. and I just started playing. Doom, 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 doom. On the, on the keyboard, okay. and I remember Fatima came in, mm-hmm. and he was like, and he just started singing, oh, wow. <laughs> and I just started playing. He was like, "Yo, I want to record that one," and that's how he came on the CD. He oh, wanted wow. to, and that was an extra song that was on the CD. So okay. we did that, but you know, it, that was the the whole process, you know, and just going every time they had you know the time to go to the studio, I just went with them. Okay. So, it was a different process, you know, recording keyboards first with the scratch vocal and then bass, like that. And then, you know, from there, once everything was done, then I would go to Belito House to do the, the percussion, the drums and uh, the congas. Okay, okay. All right, bro. So now, right, Fernandez Band album come out and, and it blows up because I remember I wasn't in the parties, but, you know, mm-hmm. everything that was coming out, I was making my mom go to Donicio and get it for me <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Yo, so now Fernandez Band album comes out and it blows up. Mm-hmm. And at this point, everything that you're doing is blowing up. <laughs> so now, right, how does, you know, how does Linky Zapata feel in them times? How is it that you feel like, yo, everything that I'm doing is blowing up or were you even thinking that way let's ask that no i just like i said from day one i just want people to enjoy the music that i come out with mm, okay. so and i try to do it to the best of my ability mm-hmm. with whoever i you know i deal with yeah. so um actually it, it felt good of course mm-hmm. you know coming from you know something that i've done in the studio on somebody else's studio and then people you know loving it yeah so it was a it was a great feeling that's what's know? up that's what's up. Yo, so so never at one time you thought to yourself, yo, I'm hot in the streets, son. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, know what, I know what happens when people think that way. So okay. I, I never think that way. I always try to stay humble and, mm-hmm. you know, try to just do do what I can do, yeah, you know, yeah. the best of what I, what I can do. Mm-hmm. That's what's up, bro. <laughs> That's what's up. That's really what's up. All right. So, um. So now, right, I think after Fernandez's band album, well, I don't know if it's around the same time, mm-hmm. I hear your work on Alagani's first album, which is the um, Sigue Bailando. Yeah, I hear I hear you and Big June on there. How was that experience? Because, you know, before Alagani, they were Travesia band, and, mm-hmm. you know, 
they were dealing with, you know, J. King and all of that stuff. Yeah. Or whatever. So how was it like working with this new Alagani band? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, actually, like I said, when I left Garif Na Kids in 97, then all these different bands were calling me. So that's how I got in contact with Alagani. Well, they got in contact with me, too. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we did that, the recording in Jake's studio in Long Island. Okay. And again, we recorded, like, two hours before we went mm -hmm. to the studio. They was missing one song. Yeah. Which was the Nino song, Ay Ay Ay. Mm -hmm. And I arranged that song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, wow. So, <laughs> That's so, what's up. Yeah, bro. within those two hours of rehearsing, I, I came up with that, you know, with that arrangement there, and we took it to the studio. So. You didn't arrange um, Chila? No. No. Um, okay. Actually, Dita, Dita did most of those songs. Oh, okay. So okay. it was me and Dita that did. Well, I only did um, Ay Ay Ay. Okay. And the slow jam that was on there. Okay. Um, but Dita did most of the, the stuff that was on that album. Ah, okay. You know. Interesting. Yeah, man, I know you had a um, real um, good relationship with um, with Nino, too, from Travesia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. How, oh, was, yeah. how was Nino, man? I never got to know him. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. know who he was or anything. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Ah, he was, he was quiet, you okay. know, real quiet. But, he, you know, he was fun and... That's how I try to be when somebody comes to my studio. I try to make them, you know, feel feel good. And, yeah. You know, he was real humble, quiet dude, and you know, he was about his business. Okay. You know, so yeah. he will come to the studio, do his, do what he have to do, have his song ready, and we'll work like that. Interesting. You know? It's unfortunate. I, I wanted to work with him more, but of course, you know, he passed as well. So. Yeah. Yo. So now, all right. So another thing, right? I know. All right. Um. I know you had Nino that you worked with. You mm -hmm. had Jimmy Swaso that you, um, you know, worked with, or whatever. All right, you as a producer and these people friends, right? How, like, but like, you know, how was that for you? Like, you know, I don't know. They didn't, you know. I, I know Jimmy died in '04. And Nino died in like 2005. Mm -hmm. Did any of those deaths, like, you know, do anything to you? Well, yeah, of course it uh, affected me as well as the mm -hmm. Garifuna community. Yeah, you know. Um, but it was so uninspected, mm -hmm. you know, nobody expected that. Yeah. Um, so it really, you know, put a burden on, you know, the music mm -hmm. that I was doing. But of course, at the same time, I had to say, hey, you know, let me keep it going yeah. for, for them, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. you know, make them proud as well, you know. Yeah. So that's, you know, of course, it's heartbroken and you hurt, but you got you to gotta keep moving on. Yeah, definitely. Wow. All right, yo. So, um, all right. So now, um, like you just said, different groups are contacting you, and mm -hmm. you know, to produce the albums and stuff like that. So now, it gets to a you get to a point where you start producing your own albums, like your compilations. Oh with, yeah, yeah. Like Mi Gente Mi Cultura Volume One. I mm -hmm. remember that was yo, Linky. You a household name, bro. I'm <laughs> telling you. <laughs> you know that was in that was in everybody's house. Or whatever, yeah. So, what made you want to start, um, you know, producing like your own kind of mixtapes or whatever? Um, actually, it was that knowing that knowing all these different groups, mm -hmm. and they had that confidence in me for me to record with them or for them. Okay. So all I, you know, I was like, you know, this thing in that group, this thing in this other group, you know, I want to do something with them. Yeah. You know, so I actually just started that way. Started with one person first, mm -hmm. then another person. Until I got, you know, as many songs as I got. Okay. And that's how I came out with the album. But, you know, I always wanted to do a, an album like that. Okay. Just different different people. Because mm -hmm. if you notice, um, Nino's first album, the song I Amistad mean, Garifuna. Yeah. With um with Chetty, you know, Cabo, yeah, Reckless, Reckless and all Tableta. That. Mm -hmm. So I was like, since that time, I always wanted to do like a compilation like that. Okay. And I finally got my chance to do it. Yeah, that's what's up. You made two, actually. <laughs> yeah, man, I remember the first one. Yo, the first compilation, I love it, man. And mm -hmm. the last song, I don't know what is it about you saying, yeah, the last song, this is the song everybody <laughs> going home to. We going to throw everybody on this. Oh, yeah. So that's where the inspiration came from, from, from Nino's Amistad Garifuna song. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Yo, what was it like? Um, okay, so I know that besides you producing and recording these albums, you was doing a lot of transferring and stuff, because I know you worked with Jake a lot. Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. So how was that process of, you know, going from your studio to go dump the stuff? Like, did you did you make the trip to Jake House once you had things complete, or were you going, you know, when it was semi-done, or how was that? No, I would go when everything was complete. Okay. When I had everything sequenced on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And so all I did was 
take my keyboard mm -hmm. and the drum machine okay. and just hook it up. Mm -hmm. And we would, you know, at that time we was using ADATs, mm -hmm. like little VCR tapes, okay. to put all the music on. Mm -hmm. And that's how I would transfer it, okay. you know, like that. Oh, wow. Did you have to play the files one by one or was it like a data thing? Um, With the the drum machine, it had... I think I was just using three three lines, three outputs. Okay. And the bass drum, cowbell, and mm -hmm. and the hi hat just for reference. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and um, with the keyboard I was using four, mm -hmm. so basically it was seven at a time. Uh -huh. we was, okay. We was transferring, so if I had like sixteen tracks, mm -hmm. you know, we'll have to do it again and again. Okay. So. Yo, and shout out to Jake for you know opening his studio oh, yeah. to you or whatever because I'm sure we could say he saw you grow up, right? Definitely. Yeah. And I learned a lot from him too, you okay. know, as far as, you know, engineering, mixing, the mixing process. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from him. Yes, so man. thank him. Shout you know. out to Jake Rinaldo. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, well, well. Well, I watch Reckless. Live a